Hey everybody and welcome to the first in a new series of tutorials on calling flame in the real world. Now this new series I'm going to be doing um, might be slightly longer than what you're used to but they are going to be completely geared towards real world flame tasks and how I will complete them. So you're going to have access to the uh, same footage as me and um, it's going to be literally start to finish um, how I'd approach um, real world stuff in flame that um, you know that a flame artist will come across in their day-to-day uh, -day. so this first uh, uh, in the series is going to be about screen replacements and to be fair I've had a couple people ask me um, on my approach for screen replacements um, probably two people so literally a couple people so this is going to be my approach and um, as you can see this is the end result it's um, it's passable um, it's also an example of um, what I would consider kind of worst case scenario. So I'm just gonna pause and um, hide effects. And you see, it's got everything that you don't want pretty much. I mean, the main thing it does have um, that I think is very necessary, um, again, this is talking about real world stuff, is um, I'm, I'm a fan of, uh, you know, TVs maybe, um, if nothing intersects, being just black um, to get those reflections back in. But when it comes to phones, especially, and when there's, um, you know, fingers and, uh, you know, stuff like that interacting with it, you're always going to get outlines and weird stuff or you're going to have to roto and you're going to have to play stuff back on. So I, I really am a fan of the feeding the phone green um, while still, like you see in this, maintaining um, your reflections for free and your smudge from, from the fingers, obviously. Now, this isn't shot professionally. This is, you know kind of real world too because you know lots of these aren't done professionally or are not ideal and you know that is the real world and hence um this is a you know real world flame series so you know um you can see we we have this guy which is not fun at all um in a traditional cane standpoint um you can see we've got our reflections we've got our little smudges um you know we've got the hand interacting it's kind of a bit of a pain and I'm going to show you how I would usually um, approach this in uh, inside of flame um, so I'm just gonna jump in I'm gonna throw this stuff away um, but the thing to note with this is I will always um, in my workflow uh, generally with tracking stuff um, I will still always try out um, especially if a shot fails I will still like I still own um, you know mocha for uh, Linux and that's worth noting and it's not saying um, the f the f that flames plane our tracker isn't good um, it's just like you know I uh, you know I have a license of uh, synthize and I had a license of PF match it you know it's throwing whatever you need to do to get the job done at that particular point in time so again there's no right or wrong the the the, the <laughs> The more you can stay in flame, the better. Um, but this one, I'm going to show you too why I would um, opt to uh, to not use this. So again, um, real world, um, we've got our shot. Um, for whatever reason, um, well, it's actually because I recorded this wrong. It's 1280 by 720, and it's 59.94 non-drop frames. So that's what it is. Um, we're stuck with that. So in my workflow, just to show you, um, you know, my, my method. So, you know, I usually like to try and just see what I'm dealing with and I'm going to pull out a G mask and just kind of go to a frame where I feel like it's a good starting point. And, you know, I'm just going to draw a pretty rough shape kind of around the areas that I think will help the track. And I'm going to go to tracking I'm gonna press F8 and then go to planar perspective going to turn on auto update reference, turn on my lighting occlusions, analyze RGB. I'm going to press snap and F8. Sorry. And that's because I don't have anything in here. So now if I press F8, you see now we got our um, our isolated area that's going to be used for tracking. And you know, that's that's good. So let's let's see how that goes. So I'm going to have a look at that again F8 and snap. Sorry, F8 snap set analyze forward see it's going all right but you see what happens when we are tracking with stuff like this besides this stuff is you know we're we're kind of losing perspective so again this is where we would try um you know our friend perspective grid um 
which I kind of don't love all the time. But anyway, I'm going to put this to 2D and let's just temp it in. So again, I'm just going to draw these down here, get these kind of in there. And again, this is kind of what I'll do on every shot um, when I'm working is I'll kind of throw anything and everything just to see just to see what I'm dealing with. Okay, so I like putting that to 2D. That's just me. Um, some people like 3D. I like 2D because I can see the grid. Again, so let's um, let's give it a helper because we don't want to track the whole thing because otherwise the thumb is going to confuse it. So let's, with the perspective grid selected, let's pull out G-Mask. And again, let's, let's just do kind of an area around there that we think will contribute pretty nice to this guy. So... I'm going to view the perspective grid tracking and then turn on, actually I'm going to do this so we can see, I'm going to turn on auto update reference, press snap F8 and you see it's taking into account everything. Um, but um, because we have a G mask as a child, if we go back to F8 and in our analysis constraints, right now it's inclusive, let's put that to G masks and then press snap and you see now, now I've isolated that and again, this is different to what we just did just because it's, you know, we've got our nice scaling and um, all that stuff going on that uh, we get for free with the perspective grid. So again, let's turn on lighting occlusion, snap, set, forward. And you see it's not doing too bad, but it's, it's not doing the best. It's kind of, you know, got some wackiness going on here. Again, it could be the shape for there, but let's, you know, let's go backward, snap set and lies backward let this quickly chug through and this is the thing um, specifically for me whenever i do anything that is screen replace or 3d track dependent i really don't like um futzing with the tracking data it's for me it's it's either tracked well or you're just gonna have a warbly weird Thing that bounces around just like when you kind of got to hand animate something that's been you know rotoed or something so i try to avoid that personally so you know this is where i would go okay what's this going to look like if i try it in in mocha or you know if it was a 3d track thing i'd spit it up so this just so happens because it is screen replacements i'm going to go to mocha strength so literally i'm just outputting um you know i've done a right file um, just if anyone wants to so I'm sure I'm not so if they wanted to follow along I'm just saying making sure it matches my my guy I'm gonna make it a targa um, and then I can just go to my path and uh, you know I've got in my green bright which is in there and then literally you just render it out and that's all I've done I'm not gonna bother re-rendering it um, and I just renamed it too so if I just tab now into mocha and I'm just gonna do a new project I won't save I'm gonna import and this is my guy, my green bright. I'm going to open it. And again, I just need to make sure my frame rate is 59.94. And that's all good. So I'm going to press OK. And that's because I did it before. So that's fine. And yeah, here's my, here's my same shot in Mocha. So again, um, not saying one tracker is better and one's worse. But you get different results um, just like a 3D track. So I'm just going to go to the XBlind tool up here. And I'm going to draw pretty much the same shape that I did in Flame, right? Let's keep it fair. And there we are. I'm just going to pull that one out so it's kind of hard edge. Um, let's maybe draw around those. And let's just turn on perspective, leave the pixels up there. And let's just click this guy and go track forward. And that's doing pretty good. It's not getting too confused by by this worst case scenario lighting, let's jump to keyframe back and track backwards. And you'll see, this is kind of why I like using this sometimes. Um, it just gets me there 90% 90, 90 of the way there, sometimes a lot quicker. Again, it's on a shot by shot basis though, because sometimes flame will nail it. It's whatever I can do to just get the job done. So. Let's quickly visualize how bad this really is. So I'm just going to rough this in just somewhere, somewhere around here. And I'm going to press play and let's have a look. And 
can see it's it's pretty good. I'm just trying to look where we're getting problems. I mean, I'm getting kind of slippage up here. You see it kind of comes in and out up in that corner. Um, a little bit on the right, but again, this is all kind of in, in blur, so it's not too bad. Um, you know, this guy here too kind of comes in and out of acceptable, I guess. But we are kind of changing perspective planes on the guy. So, you know, for this, um, I think I, we could get away with, because it is going to be fairly soft. So again, this is, it's like every task in compositing. Let's see what we can get away with. So I'm going to go to adjust track just to keep this fair. I'm going to turn off this guy. I think, no, it's not that guy. It's this guy. Nope. That guy, no. <laughs> okay, that guy. Cool. All right, and I need to select him. And I mean, it is freaking out a little. Let's play again. I just don't wanna, don't wanna revisit this if I don't have to. So. Okay, yeah. Let's um, I'm gonna throw it away. I just, again, I'd like to get the track right before I. Kind of too far so let's just jump to this frame and let's do this from here so I'm just going to do that and again it's a very similar shape to what we had in flame okay something like that and let's keep perspective off for this just for uh, just for the heck of it so let's track backwards it's actually already looking a bit tighter, so I'm going to jump to the next keyframe. Let's track forward. And this is where I kind of get amazed with planar tracking, how you can just handle all these weird occlusions and shapes going on in there. So let that do that. And there we go. Okay, so again, let's um, let's see how it went in the real world. Let's quickly check these guys in. Some more there, and let's press play. Okay. All right now. I'm feeling a lot better with that. There is again, there's some little bits here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna hide behind the mo the motion. Well, not the motion blur, but the depth of field and the um, the reflection. And that's the thing. It's knowing what what's gonna help you get away with stuff. And for me, reflections can be your best friend with this type of stuff and all this kind of schmutz that's going on so i'm happy with that i'm not even going to do any adjustment of this i'm just going to go export and for flame it's using the autodesk ifs blah 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 stabilizer data and i'm going to save and i've already did one before but i'll do it here and just override it yes okay so it's gonna tab back into flame okay so um the other thing too is uh this technique is just like my additive cure technique. So it's using additive, and I use this every day, like I've said, for, um, for screen replacements. And just like the additive key technique, it is totally reliant on a lighter background. So, so stuff like this, elements like this that are white and um, you know, way more white heavy than, than, than dark heavy, say like this, these guys are your best friend because they will comp in beautifully and with minimal effort because you're not going to have to worry about um, about stuff. Now, when you comp, try and comp something in similar to this, um, you'll see why in a minute, why it's not fun and not recommended. And, you know, again, why you would pay more attention when this guy was shot and make sure it wasn't shot like this because otherwise you are doing the traditional annoying key and then trying to kiss this stuff back in through every trick in the book which can be super time consuming and just a waste of time and in the end kind of looks not that good anyway so just for organizational purposes I like to do this and I just call this source 
and then I like to make that guy red and then not make it red and then make it red um, that's just something I like to do now that we've got these cool little guys um, I find this helps especially when I pass off my setups to someone else um, same with this I'd usually do something like this just here and then you know spit it out um, you know but again to each their own um, again so it wasn't really working with what we were doing in here and again sometimes you're under the pump um, I'm sure I could have kind of tweaked this and got it there, but I sometimes just like to, again, um, right tool for the right job. So let's pull out an action and just drop that in. Add a new input and let's first, um, let's just pipe it in and um, get everything going. So I'm gonna, this is my this is my guy I've put in. It's just a screen grab of um, a thing from the area uh, on the phone. It's 1080 by 1920, which is the right dimensions for phones when they're in vertical so um, let's quickly change this to perspective and I'm just going to control drag select the points I don't think that's even necessary I'm going to the stabilizer I'm going to load go to my uh, my M.2 and go to my green bright and my track folder that I saved and here's my green bright and load that in I'm going to press return now this is my fault actually um, un unless you set your uh, your perspective points it's not going to match up because again this is based off um, this and it's based off you setting it up so um, it doesn't really matter because you have these guys are actually independent of your um, uh, surface level um, animation so this again if we touch one of these guys you see it won't actually participate which is what we want so I'm just going to select that guy go up here select this guy and just quickly rough these in and then let's go and just take them in a little bit closer and again when you look at something like this um, and if you could imagine shooting this for say one of the Samsung curved ones or if there are you know edge to edge phones coming out soon um, you can quickly see why you would not want to just have a black screen with nothing being fed because where are the edges I mean yeah I hope that is obvious but anyway I'm gonna put that to EWA just to um you see it defaults here and you know EWA just smooths that out and I'm not gonna use so I'll see if what hardware looks like yeah okay eight, 16 8 16 okay I'll leave it at 16 and that's one to one that's all right um, maybe it'll just kiss some extra sampling too so four cool and make sure in view that filtering's off okay okay so there's my my guy and let's press play and we got some weird weird wackiness going on and let's let's quickly again this is all part of the fun of doing these live let's troubleshoot and see what is going on um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's because I set my thing after I might be wrong but let's um, let's see if it was so I'm gonna throw that away and pull that out I'm going to go to perspective again I'm gonna pull these out pull him down and just rough that in rough that in and rough that in and then let's go to vertices, load, green, bright, return. And that is working now. So yeah, that was weird. Maybe, I mean, I know too, I didn't select my points. I'm actually not too sure why that happened. Um, but again, um, when in doubt, throw away and just start again. So if we press play, you see that's doing what we want. That's matched in. Um, you guys already know my trick that I like to do too. Once that's in, it's just to turn on the auto expand just to cover any uh, any of those green portions. So I'm just going to put that up to like 21. Yeah, 21 looks good. And again, this is purely just for those bits. Now that's doing what I want. Again, most of this too, if we look at the front, most of this is going to be blurred anyway. So we'll see how we comp that in nicer um, but let's quickly I'm just gonna pull out a mux just do this guy 
let's start comping this in for if we just do a matchbox for what we'd use it for so I have this I don't have the matchbox all living in the same spot um, here we go additive key pull that in and let's start putting this together so again uh, the additive key looks for the foreground original dis build and then we just need the back so this is gonna be the back um, obviously and then the foreground which is up here so foreground and that's our original and dis build we're gonna do um, just like would be done with an additive key here. and that just needs a back and again we're just gonna go in there and you see that's that's good um, but again we want to front color correct and make sure it is only touching the green and it is and it's doing a good job I mean the other thing to note too is this actually happened to me on another job is be careful if um, this is happening and there's a green environment behind it you know you'll have to kind of roto back in around the phone or mat back in and shrink just because uh, again you're not using it like a traditional green screen will be done um, okay so yeah that's what we want um, again front CC only touching the uh, the color again I'm working in a bit too but it doesn't really matter because this is the worst case scenario footage so again so for foreground input 2 will be the foreground D build and then the next input will be our back which will be our tracked um, our tracked guy and again nothing happens but if we enable this little button that Ivar made and then let's pull down on I don't like really touching the blend too much it just kind of washes stuff out don't really touch too much of this guy either because it just just goes to garbage a little bit but I do like touching the background offset just a little I like to pull down just a little somewhere there is usually kind of feeling good you see that's already looking good but the other thing I like doing too is um, let's do quickly do a color correct just after this and minus click spacebar one let's go to a frame kind of around here and I'm just going to crunch crunch right down somewhere there and play with the offset and bypass somewhere there is feeling all right I'm just gonna press play see that's good now the only thing is yeah right now you see it is obviously sharper here it's not perfect but again up here it should be fairly uh, blurred out so let's um, let's try and do that and I'm not gonna do it how it should be done which would be um, you know by converting this to linear this is just gonna be a quick and dirty um, it's gonna pull that there and then do a color gradient make that the background and just do this and that's working okay and let's pipe that in into there and let's go to the focus and let's pull it up somewhere there and use matte and we just want to actually invert it so I'm going to go to negative and you see that's working and we'll kind of pull it up maybe see what that looks like in there that's already better for up the top but again with spacebar one let's pull this down maybe I'll pull that down too Again, it's not the right blur that is kind of naff so I'm going to actually kill that that is not what I was hoping to do again this is all part of the fun when you're just trialing stuff out um, let's see I'm going to go to another G mask G mask uh, gradient and again let's make it the background res and whoop that like that all right let's try a different one um i know i have some sparks let's see if these will work um let's do blurs mask let's see how that goes front mask 
Okay, the fall off still weird, but let's um, let's do Z blur then. You could use a matchbox too. I'm just using um, Sparks just just cause. Um, okay, source and Z buffer, and that's better. I'm getting a better fall off. There's the Miles S the S S Miller blur is pretty good too. I'm just using this because we don't have that here right now. Okay, so um, if we put that in now and to speed it up, we'll just freeze that frame. I know. Um, action supposed to be in batch is meant to be aware but I still like doing that and because you get this handy freeze I think it's pretty good so if we go spacebar one um, and it's way too blurred um, if we pull that down now see now that's getting better because we don't want all um, go spacebar one you don't want all of that um, guy to be sharp and you see that's doing better because we're introducing, we do still want a little bit of that fall off um, and we are getting it. Uh, we just press play. Okay, it's way too much. <laughs> way, way, way too much. All right, let's go in and let's pull the width down. It's got a point 0.1. Yeah, we can go right down. That's better. Um, set key, keep, keep. You have to do that twice with the sparks. And let's have a look. All right, that's that's more reasonable, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's not as um, that's not as in your face as before. Now let's um, let's quickly actually turn off hide effects. Let's quickly render that up, and just see what it looks like in motion. And press play. Okay, um, now I am very much liking this. There, are, like, like every shot, there's so many little things you could tweak, but for me, this is a good starting point that I would kind of um, pass on and get notes on. Um, uh, again, this is quite, quite a awesome technique. And again, I know it's using the same additive key, but again, this is real world stuff and this is what I use um, all the time now i mentioned at the start too uh this works on brighter stuff now i'm going to show you quickly too and again this is just the best bit is just how nice this just everything everything that was shot is in there for free and because we're not pushing it too much we're not introducing noise and that's also to do with the fact that this is at a nice um if we go to vector scope and go to luminance you know this stuff is right around 80 which is just there even on a you know this is a crappy dslr um you're not going to get any unnecessary noise um when you have it you're not going to get hurt when you have it that that bright but again you're, you see we're still getting all these reflections for free we're still getting all of this um the smudges if that's what you wanted and again you'd clean this otherwise if you didn't but for me that's very much passable um and again, if it was being animated, you'd animate, but I'm not going that far with these real world ones. It's literally start to finish from what I would consider could be uh, shared with client if, you know, if it was in a spot that I thought was good, which I think this is good. Now, the other thing is, you know, what if we did want to brighten the screen? Again, we can't go too much further like you saw pre. So the other thing you can always do, and I'm gonna pull out a key or 3D and just add a point here is you can always, if we just keep, again, this is nasty footage. You can always just pull this out and just go all nodes um, and, and we'll just negate that and we can go to color, color correct. You can always color correct it after too. So again, this is within reason because you start doing that too much, you're gonna lose all this niceness, but you could always, Gamma down, but again, you gamma down too much. It's going to introduce what was in camera to start with. Um, so you could offset, you could gain, but again, this is where you would you would want to treat that blur. Just view that as context too. This is where you'd blur that off. Um, and if we look at that, compare it to that. Again, it just depends on what you're trying to do but you will have to kind of treat it like you would if you were um, coloring I guess you just it's kind of very very broad strokes you don't want to um, 
to draw attention to you know any of this stuff you see that that is a good example of kind of how far you will have to push it um, if you wanted for that to work because you know you are kind of shifting everything um, and again it works you know we could always also you know up the saturation of that but you don't want to go too far again it's it's within the reason um, it's more of a global if you're going to do it after because you don't I don't know. I don't usually tend to use light wrap with this stuff unless it's a dark room. You don't. You're not going to get much glowing or anything like that. I mean, you could with this. Um, again, if we just did uh, supply the spark and let's do the glow. And again, I just don't have logic uh, matchbox on here. This isn't a stab at matchbox at all. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not having a go at you, Ivar, if you're watching. All right, so close mask. I'm just I'm just using what's in front of me. That's all it is. Okay, so that's my front and my mat. And again, this is where you know maybe maybe this bit does have a glow. You widen it out. You pull it down. You know that's kind of cool. It's kind of borderline, but you know maybe that's that's kind of what what is requested for that side. You know, for whatever reason, yeah, that works. Jump back. Um, throw that away, throw that away. Let's see, and just press play. You know, that's that's not horrible, you know, and again, um, real world technique, the best bit with this is, um, actually that's the most annoying bit with this, you have to zoom all the way in, but you see we are not touching edges like we're used to. We've got all this beautiful stuff for free. And I'll just call this, um, Again, this is a result of me getting used to these great new elbows. Well, not new anymore, but I'm just gonna do space V. This will just be called our, I'm gonna call it the blend. And we're just gonna call this the track. And this will be screen source, space V. Okay. And again, this is um, this is a real world job now for me, where it's keep it clean. All right, um, yeah, that's not too bad actually. You know, that could just be um, extra extra mush. And again, you know, um, I think that is a great great technique for this. Um, but like I said too, um, at the start of this this is not your best friend when uh, using anything other than a lighter um, guy and let's have a look why so let's swap it out here's this guy that goes in okay that looks all right okay okay not so good so this is just how it is um, uh, let's I don't want to ruin this so let's um, let's do this and this is worth noting too so don't like any uh, magic bullet, it um, it only works in certain scenarios. So don't um, don't complain to me if it doesn't work later, um, because you know some things just work in certain scenarios. So let's say this is it, and okay, okay, let's throw that away. Let's have a look at this. Okay, so really, if we just let's see if we play with. The back thing okay yeah you see instantly we're getting what we don't want we're introducing that noise um, that lives in the you know the blacks in this footage because it's crappy DSLR and and again even with your best cameras you're still gonna get this noise so say pulling down there uh, pull down there I see again too much it's kind of it's kind of all right somewhere okay that's kind of acceptable right so let's pull out the color and for the bottom one and let's just go there. Spacebar two, spacebar two. Oops, spacebar two on the right. And again, if we contrast that and darken, no, nope, that's not going to work. And we offset. Again, this is where it becomes problematic. Um, and that's where, again, maybe you would treat it after um, with the extra mush stuff. So with the color corrector. But again, you just get away with so much more with the white um, and lighter. Um, you know, anything above 50 pretty much in your um, luminance values is going to be your best friend. And then that's the same with um, using it as a proper key or two, especially with hair, which has been done and been shown. 
So yeah, I'm just gonna say that's gonna be it for this um, first one in um, Real World Flame. Um, again, this one's gonna be on screen replacements. And um, you know, I really hope it was useful for you guys. Um, again, this is a real world thing that, um, you know, as, as much of other cool things get done in Flame, there's also stuff like this that um, can be a pain, but also um, can be done right and look very good. So um, that's going to be it for this one, guys. If you have any questions, uh, leave one below. If you like the new format or you hate it, uh, let me know too. And um, yeah, uh, stay tuned for the next one.